I'm Richard Connor, lead author of the World Water Development Report. Water and energy are intricately linked. They're interconnected. You need water to produce pretty much any type of energy that you want. Uh, electricity, extraction of fossil fuels, etc. Similarly, you need energy to produce, deliver, and treat water. The decisions that you make about water will affect energy. And the decisions that you make about energy will determine how much water you need. Sometimes you can make good decisions about water that will have a bad impact or a negative impact on energy. On the other hand, you might be trying to make good, sound decisions about energy, but they might have pretty bad impacts on water. To meet increasing energy demands, we're looking at more and more different ways to meet our energy requirements. Take shale gas, for instance, hydraulic fracking. It's a relatively inexpensive way to capture a lot of uh, fossil fuels that would otherwise not be available. However, there are significant environmental impacts. So what are the other options? In a context of climate change, you'll want to go towards renewable uh, energy. But again, even renewable energy has impacts on water resources. Hydroelectric power, of course, is the most obvious. The type of energy we choose will determine how much water we need and will also have an impact on the water resource itself, not just in terms of the amount we use, but also in terms of the quality. Take hydrologic fracking, for instance. It might be a cheap way to access unconventional uh, gas deposits, but it may have significant environmental impacts, especially in terms of uh, groundwater pollution or contamination. In the context of climate change, when we're looking to decrease our use of fossil fuels, what are the options? Well, renewable energy seems to be a good idea. But again, hydropower has significant impacts on the hydrologic resource, on basins, and even on people. Besides hydropower, biofuels is another renewable energy, but which still has significant impacts on water. Now, on the water side, meeting growing demands will also require more energy. You can think of desalination as a possible way to get uh, ocean water, salt water, to, to be used for hu human consumption or other human uses. But again, this requires an awful lot of energy. And that energy has to be produced somehow. And the production of that energy requires water. So you're in a feedback loop where you're increasing, constantly increasing demands on water to meet your energy requirements. And similarly, meeting your energy requirements requires more and more water. So that's where the uh, next World Water De Development Report is going to focus on these interlinkages between water and energy, taking them into account and making the right decisions.